New regulations on travel to Cuba were announced today by the White House. The new rules roll back several tourism changes made by President Obama in 2015. In June, President Trump announced that he would implement tougher policy on the island nation. The changes take effect tomorrow. Steve Dorsey has been following the story and joins us now from Washington, D.C. with the latest. So, Steve, what specifically is outlined in these new regulations and what, what are the biggest changes for Americans? Well, Rena, these new rules specifically bar Americans from doing business with many entities in Cuba run by the Cuban military, the intelligence service, the security service there. It outlines dozens of hotels, shops, bars, tour groups, and other entities that the, Cuba go the Cuban government runs that are prohibited uh, from Americans uh, to do business with. It also, and most importantly, prevents Americans from going to Cuba and traveling there independently. Americans now, as President Trump suggested in June, must use a Treasury Department authorized tour agency in Cuba to lead these so-called people-to-people travel exchanges. So Steve, who do you think will be most impacted by these regulations? The biggest impact will be felt by U.S. airlines. Travel experts I talked with uh, tell me that U.S. airlines have been capitalizing on the growth of independent travel to Cuba. The other uh, sectors that will be affected are cruise lines and Airbnb. They will benefit the most from these changes because uh, Airbnb primarily uh, benefits citizens in Cuba, opening up their homes to Americans, which is what uh, the, the Trump administration wants to channel American business away from these entities run by the Cuban government and directly to the Cuban private sector. And cruise lines already run group tours. They've already announced uh, itineraries that in include stops in Havana and they will benefit as well. Yeah, you don't think about tourism and how it could really help transform and, and change that country. But ultimately, what's the point here, Steve? What's the ultimate purpose of these regulations? Well, the, the Trump administration says it doesn't want to funnel any more money into the Cuban regime. It wants to build democracy through the private sector, through capitalism in some senses, though, uh, as we know, so much of Cuba is communist. And this is the one way uh, it says it's doing that by rolling back some of these uh, efforts to warm up relations to increase trade and travel uh, between the U.S. and Cuba that former President Obama uh, initiated a couple years ago. So are they different, Steve, from what we've seen in the past under the Trump administration? Well, this is the first uh, major step that the Trump administration uh, has published in the Federal Register, which will uh, be tomorrow and taken by the State Department, the Treasury Department and the Commerce Department to fulfill this promise that uh, President Trump made in Little Havana in Miami in June. Uh, and, and experts tell us that, that we could be seeing more of these because remember, this is on the heels of not only these promises made by the president in the summer, but also uh, reports that began in August broken by CBS News about these attacks affecting U.S. diplomats working in Havana over the past year. You mentioned those attacks, the acoustic attacks. Does any of this have to do with those attacks on U.S. Well, diplomats? Well, a senior U.S. A government official tells CBS that that these new changes have nothing to do with these acoustic incidents, as this person describes them. Uh, however, uh, it is clear that uh, it is an important factor in the discussions regarding the U.S. relationship with Cuba. This certainly uh, does not help the U.S. relationship and doesn't build a case to, uh, to liberalize any more of the trade or travel relationships between the two countries. Steve Dorsey in Washington. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you, Reno.